Hey all, this is Catfish Cameron. Today, we're bringing you Catfishing for Beginners. We're gonna talk about some gear, rigs, bait, and locations to start catching yourself some catfish. Let's get straight to it. Alrighty, let's talk about the type of gear you're gonna need for some beginner catfishing. We're gonna talk about the gear we decided to go with for our first time catfishing setup. We have a $20 Shakespeare tiger rod from Walmart. This is a white tiger rod. There's also a blue tiger rod. This is a medium action with 8 to 15 pound line rating. Shakespeare tiger. That comes preloaded as a combo. 12 pound mono on a 50 size Shakespeare Tiger Reel. It's a Tiger Combo. $20 at Walmart. Now we have our 99 cents Ozark Trail. Pretty much just a, a bank sinker. One ounce bank sinkers for 99 cents at Walmart. Now for swivels, also at Walmart. Eagle Claw Barrel Swivel, size 3. These were my go-to swivel from Walmart. And also from Walmart. Comes in a bag like this. Beads to protect your knot from your sinker. Then for hooks. The only thing I did not get at Walmart. Gamagatsu Octopus Circle in a 7 knot size. It's a seven knot circle hook. The circle hook is gonna allow you to catch more catfish and release catfish to your choosing. You will not gut hook a lot of fish with this hook and you will not have to set the hook with the circle hook. We will tell you about that more. Let's talk about how we're gonna get all of this rigged up on the tiger rod. Let's get to it. You're also going to need some type of stick in the ground rod holder. This I also got from Walmart. I believe it is also Ozark Trail brand. This will serve you well in a lot of places. Good old stick in the ground, lightweight, metal rod holder from Walmart. This is a brand new Shakespeare Tiger rod from Walmart. Brand new. Don't litter. Put that right in my backpack. There's the top half of the rod. There's the bottom half. A little price tag on there. We'll slide that right off. Oh, I need to cut it off. Alright, let's put these two pieces together, line them up, line them rod eyes up, Just look down their eyes, have a line keeper, take the line, open your bail, take the line out of the line keeper, Jeez. There you go. Well, let's loosen the drag. Start stringing up the rod. Make sure you don't miss any eyes. Give ourselves some line to work with. We're gonna take one of our weights. Depending on your current, you might have to put up to two weights on your pole. Just depends. We're going to take our weight. This is the first rig. Carolina rig. We're going to put our weight on our main line. Just like that. Weight on the main line. And you're going to take 
one of your beads. You're gonna put that on your main line. And you have your bead. Now you're gonna take a barrel swivel. You're gonna take your barrel swivel and tie it on your main line using your favorite fishing knot. My favorite fishing knot for this part of the rig is a uni knot. Now, here on camera. You're gonna take, you're gonna put your swivel on your main line. You're gonna take the tag end. You're gonna give yourself enough line to work with. You're gonna wrap it around your finger and make a P. Just like that. Make sure those are parallel. Just like that. Then you're gonna take that, your tag end, and put it through there seven times. One, two, Three, four, five, don't be afraid if it bunches up on you. Six and seven. Now it should look like this. Now you're going to lubricate the knot with some saliva. Then you're going to pull your tag end and your main line until it starts to cinch. Re lubricate and then begin to cinch down the knot until you get to there till the knot's right there. You're gonna pull that again, your tag end, and then you're gonna pull your main line. And then one more time, you're gonna pull your tag end and your main line. That's gonna cinch up nice and good. And that is your uni knot. You're then gonna cut your tag end and leave one to two inches of tag. It's not gonna bother the catfish one bit. Next piece of gear for beginning your catfishing journey is going to be a tougher mono to make a leader for your hook. I've gone with 40 pound trilene big game. With the way the Shakespeare rod comes with 12 pound line, I would recommend anywhere from a 30 to a 40 pound leader and you're mainly going to be relying on your drag to not break off. This will provide extra protection against the catfish's mouth and the locations that they're in. Trees, rocks, and other rough areas as such is why we use a 40 pound leader to our hook. We're gonna take about a foot little over a foot of line we're gonna cut it we're gonna begin to tie our leader the longer you make your leader the more likely you are to get snagged so I like a medium length leader one to two feet in length any longer than that I find it's hard to cast and I get snagged more. Alrighty, now you're going to take your 7 knot circle hook and your leader line. This is a 7 knot Gamagatsu octopus circle hook. Extremely sharp. You're going to put your main line through. There, you're going to pinch the line 
parallel with the shank of the hook. You are going to wrap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Anywhere seven to ten wraps around the shank of the hook. Then you are going to take the tag end and put it through the back end of your circle hook. Pull it tight. Now for the knot to connect your leader, your hook and line to your swivel is a surgeon's loop knot. That is my favorite knot. You can also do another uni knot to that swivel if you would like. But I like the surgeon's loop knot just to make it easier to take my leader off without having to cut the line. You make a overhand loop and you take this loop First things first, you take your tag end and you double it over like that. Give yourself some line to work with. You do an overhand loop around your finger. Take that loop and put it through there, just making an overhand knot. Put it through both of those lines twice. Loop it through two times. Then you're gonna lubricate your knot and hold your tag and your main line as you start to tighten. I like to use my sleeve because this line can cut you. You're going to pinch the tag end with pliers or your teeth and hold the hook to tighten that knot. And there is your surgeon's loop knot. Now you're going to take your swivel. And put the surgeon's loop knot right through. You're going to put your hook through that loop. You're going to put your knot through and pull it tight. Now there's your beginner, extremely budget Carolina rig. Your hook, a sliding weight, and a swivel to a leader. That is going to be your basic catfishing rig for just about any location. Now let's talk about bait. I have some bait. There's a whole lot of different things that catfish will eat. There's lots of stink bait at Walmart, which I do not prefer. Do not do very well when it comes to catfishing with stink bait, though stink bait will catch you catfish. I prefer to use another store-bought bait, chicken breast, chicken thighs, or shrimp. Here we have some shell on shrimp. We have chicken. We have worms. Another store bought bait. All three of these. My favorite being white cheap. chicken. Some points of the year. Little cheaper than shrimp. And chicken goes a long way. You can also season it. This is just plain chicken breast. For worms, worms are good for smaller catfish. I find myself catching much larger fish on chicken and shrimp. Now we're trying to keep this beginner catfish guide as simple as possible and as cheap as possible while still having a very quality rod that will last you quite a long time. Now that you've got your bait, let's talk about location. Catfish have many different moods, but they always must eat eventually. So we're gonna take that to our advantage and target areas where catfish are most active. 
Let's talk about that. Catfish now. live in a wide variety of areas. They'll live in areas with rocks. You can find them in open water, in the main channel of a river. You can find them up against the bank, inside of log jams, on the outside of log jams, and in different types of current. My main favorite area to fish for catfish is in wood, log jams, and tree falls that scatter the banks of lakes and rivers. Wood cover is a great area to start targeting catfish. You'd want to cast around there, around there, and if you can even get it under those trees farther back all the way along the bank, all in that general area is where I would like to target a log jam sitting perpendicular to the bank. Alrighty, you've picked your location. Now it's time to get down your rod holder, your rod, and put some bait on your hook. Make sure you have a nice, sturdy piece of ground to put your rod holder into. You may even have to stack up rocks to add some strength to make sure you do not get a rod stolen. Catfish will hit within the blink of an eye and take your gear, so it must be secured by a rod holder. That is the number one tip I have, is having your rod in a rod holder. Though, you can catch catfish holding your rod. Now that you've got yourself some chicken, shrimp, worms, corn, dead minnows, crawfish, hot dogs, chicken livers, there's a lot of different catfish baits that I think everybody should try eventually, but some are better than others. And chicken, crawfish, and other hard meats will stay on the hook much better compared to hot dogs and chicken livers. That is why I decided to go with chicken or shrimp as, number, as some of my top baits for beginner catfishing. You're gonna cut your bait up into a quarter to two finger size chunk. As you can see, this is about three fingers long and about as wide as my fingertips. This size bait is good for a catfish anywhere from under a pound to well into the 20 pound range. Big catfish will eat small baits, but you can eliminate small fish. That's what you're looking to do by using a much larger bait and hook. That's why I recommend a seven knot hook because it could still get you a small fish and land you the fish of your dreams. We're gonna start with some chicken and get it out there. Let's talk about setting the drag on your reel. You want to have a firm, firm but adjusted drag so that you get a proper hook set when this fish commits to taking down your bait. Loosen it just a little bit. You want to be able to pull your drag out slightly. You want it to be stiff. These catfish are strong. And a stiff drag ensures that you get proper hookups with the catfish using a circle hook. Now that you've cast it out, we're waiting for a fish to commit and take down the rod. You will see some taps 
but we're looking for consistent pulling on our rod. That is how we know a catfish has semi-hooked himself with the circle hook. Once you see the rod go down, you must go to the rod and reel to set the hook. You don't set the hook by jerking the rod with the circle hook. You must reel when you see the rod tip going down and that will set the hook. And then you will proceed to remove that rod and catch you a fish. Oh, is that a bite? Might have been a bite. Oh, there you go. Believe we have a catfish on. Waiting for the takedown. There you go. There's a catfish. As you can see, we waited for that fish to take the rod down, then we began to reel to set the hook. This fish is barely hooked. And there you go, you've just caught your first catfish. This is a channel catfish. Heck yeah. The circle hook got him in the corner of the mouth, barely. You had to play this fish. As you can see, the hook just came right out. Set your rod in your rod holder. Alrighty, so you've just caught your first catfish. Let's, let's talk about a little bit how to hold these fish and handle them while they're out of the water. As you can see, he has spines and they kick quite strongly with a thick muscular body. He has three spines that will spine you and poke you very badly. One, on top of his his top fin and his two side fins as you can see i've got one of these side fins between my fingers as well as my thumb purchased below the catfish and right there he cannot hurt me one bit you can then hold the catfish like this maybe put the head out or the tail out turn it sideways a little bit and you can get yourself a great fishing photo with whoever you're fishing with. Using this information, you will catch catfish. Believe you me. We're gonna talk about releasing these fish. Cause that's all I do. I don't really like to eat catfish from my river because it's contaminated with chemicals, but that will not stop you from eating catfish that you have caught on your own using this information. Let's release this fish. Now when it comes to releasing your first catfish, you're going to gently place him in the water and he'll swim off on his own. 
give them enough time in the water and they will swim off. Catfish are a hardy fish, but you do not want to prolong the fish's time out of water. Where I cast it to catch that catfish. Excuse the wind, y'all. See this line of water? Catfish use this type of current break to ambush small fish and this type of current break will also carry dead matter, dead fish, and other small crawfish. A whole bunch of different stuff that catfish will eat comes flowing down, little flows just like this all over the country. If you cast into this line anywhere around here, you are liable to find a catfish all the way through. Now that is the main current seam. If you follow this down, it leads to a slack water pool where you can see these type of rolling wakes appear from the bottom of the river. And those are your contours. You follow that current seam, it will tell you where your holes are and where you should cast in there to find your catfish. As you can see, this type of current seam also leads into a log jam, making this spot even that much more likely to hold a catfish. A catfish could hide right here all day or until he's comfortable to move up and start working in and around this current seam at many different times, day, night, morning, a lot of different hours of the day you can catch catfish. Let's get back to fishing. Now it's been a little while since we've caught that fish. We have two options. We can stay here and we can wait, which I have been. And you can wait these fish out for another one to come through. Or you can make a minute move a few feet down the bank and potentially find more active fish. Giving yourself time for the spot you were just fishing to settle down. Once you're done fishing your next spot, you can come back and potentially find fish where you had caught your first fish. So we're gonna give this rod about 20, 30 minutes more. Then I'm gonna think about changing locations slightly. Does not have to be a big move. It could be as simple as casting. Instead of casting there, I'll cast at this log jam next. Alrighty, it was about 30 minutes since that first fish we caught and about the first 15 minutes of setting up at the spot. So we moved downstream maybe 40 feet to a couple different little log jams, really tight to the bank. We're gonna fish the outside and work our way closer to the snag as the night progresses. For about an hour or less till sundown, and this should be a prime summertime, springtime pattern to get on some catfish. Right at sundown, a couple hours before sundown, generally fish for catfish. As you can see right there that limb is poking out of the water. You have to interpret that that limb can go in four directions towards you, away from you, to the either side and behind. So that's a good snag right there. You don't want to cast directly into that. But as you can see a line right there, another current break leading into wood very good catfish spot as well as a point over here into the channel it's a good transition area to find catfish that are starting to feed and currently feeding let's get to fish oh hook our little piece of shrimp on cast it out there hopefully see a fish in about 15 minutes or less
we wait. Pay attention to that rod. You can even have bells. Go on your rod, tell you when you're getting some hits. He'll come back for it. He should. He didn't feel the hook. That's why patience is key when it comes to catfishing. That's a small fish. Reel it in and check that bait real quick. There you go. Work them away from them snags. Work them away from them snags. There you go, right there. Second fish ever on the tiger rod. That's a real nice looking channel cat. Heck yeah. Woo! Keep on fishing, y'all. On your way to catching your next biggest catfish. Alrighty, take your catfish. Pretty colors on that channel catfish right there. Green, blue, red. Nice colors. That's about a two or three pound. That's about a two pound catfish right there. There he goes. Off to fight another day. There is your first catfish. If you follow the Catfish Cameron Beginner's Guide to Catfishing. I appreciate y'all watching. This was Catfish Cameron telling y'all how to start catfishing in waters near you. Appreciate you watching.